Hello audience, I'm the narrator. If you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you know what prime numbers are and want to know more about them. Otherwise, you can go back to whatever extremely productive thing it was you were doing. I broke this video into chapters so you can skip ahead of anything else you know. But I encourage you to stay tuned because this isn't just about prime numbers, it's also about this guy right here. He doesn't know anything about prime numbers, but he's about to learn. It has been said before by great mathematicians that mathematics is the queen of the sciences. Well, if that's true, then number theory is the queen of mathematics. Number theory is exactly what it sounds like. It's the study of numbers, but mostly positive whole numbers, like 4, 7, or 286. If you know how to count, you can understand number theory, but that doesn't mean it can't be fascinating. The central topic of study in number theory are the prime numbers. That's numbers that don't have any factors other than themselves and one. As mathematics is the queen of the sciences and number theory is the queen of mathematics, prime numbers are sure to be the crown jewels. Mathematicians have been studying them for 2,000 years and still can't really figure them out. Every number can be broken down into a product of prime numbers. 20, for example, can be broken down to 2 times 2 times 5. Every number has its own kind of fingerprint in a way. No two numbers share the same exact prime numbers multiplied together. While no two numbers have the same prime fingerprint, they can often share DNA. Take 12 and 33, for example. 12 is 3 times 2 times 2, while 33 is 3 times 11. They share a 3 in their DNA, if that makes sense. It's also possible to take a pair of numbers that don't share any DNA. 20 and 27, for example, don't share any prime factors in their prime fingerprints, so to speak. When two numbers don't share any DNA, we say that they are relatively prime. Notice the two numbers that are relatively prime to each other don't have to be prime themselves. There's also a special type of number called the primorial, which if you know factorial, is like the factorial for prime numbers. It's just the product of the first n prime numbers, two times three times five times seven, 210 is the fourth primorial. Mathematicians use these properties of prime numbers and more in fields like cryptography. Anybody who can figure out the prime numbers would surely have the world under their thumb. <laughs> Oh, hey bro, what's up? Oh, hey bro. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just stuck on this problem, bro. Oh, what is it? Okay, so, have you ever heard of the prime numbers? Um, of course I've heard of the freaking prime numbers, bro. All right, so. They're like the crown jewels of number theory, my All guy. right, okay, okay. Well, I'm trying to find a secret formula for them. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty ambitious. Yeah. Well, it's going to make us in charge of the international banking system if we figure it out. Um, where'd you hear that? Bro, just trust me, trust me. I saw it on the TV. It's, it's real. Dude, prime numbers are not defined by what they are. They're defined by what they aren't. Bro. Prime Bro here has taken a leap in mathematical maturity. He's discovered a whole new way of looking at the primes. Here's where things get interesting. So, we're looking for primes. Let's consider a number x that is not divisible by one of the first k primes. So, when x is divided by one of these primes, say, p, the remainder is greater than zero. But x plus a primorial, pk, or the kth primorial, has the same remainder when divided by p, since p divides the primorial. So, for example, if x was 7, k was 3, and the primorial was 30, 37 is not divisible by 2, 3, or 5, and neither is 7, but they have the same remainder. 
This means that a pattern of numbers not divisible by one of the first k primes repeats in intervals of 30. Number theorists say modulo 30. We can visualize a wheel of circumference 30 with notches in the appropriate places to better see this pattern. Let's formalize some of the features of a wheel. All we need to do is think of some prime number p. The first element on the wheel is 1, while the second is p. The circumference of the wheel is the product of all the primes less than p, in other words, a primorial. We'll call that q. For this wheel, p equals 7 and q equals 30, 2 times 3 times 5. You might notice that after a while of rolling, a wheel starts hitting composite numbers. None of these wheels are supposed to work up to infinity. If we want to generate more primes, we need to make more wheels. Turns out, we can make one wheel from another, and it's quite beautiful how it works. The circumference of the next wheel is p times q, or the primorial following q. So we'll scale up the smaller wheel by p to get the size of the next wheel. All the numbers on the smaller wheel are relatively primed to q. So all we need to do is roll the smaller wheel on the inside of the bigger, and all the elements on the larger wheel will still be relatively primed to q. But this won't change the composite numbers we hit before. The last step is to remove all the multiples of p on the larger wheel. What are the multiples of p on the larger wheel? They're all p times something, right? Well, take some number p times f. If f had any of the prime factors inside of q, so would p times f. We can think of any of the numbers on the small wheel as f, and any of the numbers on the big wheel that need to be cancelled out as p times f. They are related to each other in this way. Those numbers are only separated by a factor of p, the difference in the wheel sizes. So, we'll blow up the small wheel to be the size of the big wheel, and the small wheel's notches will cancel out all the numbers we need it to. And voila! We have the next wheel, ripe and ready to roll. The range of any given wheel will hit all the primes from p to p squared. Why is this true? Well, the lowest prime number any wheel will hit is p. That much is clear. What's the lowest composite number any wheel will hit? Remember, none of the numbers that a wheel hits uses the prime factors inside of q. What's the smallest composite number you can make without using the prime factors inside of q? It's p squared. There's no smaller number. Try this as an exercise. Find the smallest composite number you can without using the prime factors of 30, 2, 3, and 5. Pause the video. It's 7 times 7, 49. There's no smaller composite number you can make that satisfies this. If we want to find all the primes up to a number n, we'll just build wheels until p squared is greater than n, then roll. Wheels grow very quickly, up to the point where they're so big they don't even get to roll all the way around to be effective. That being said, there's still something very beautiful about rolling wheels inside of wheels. This is called the sieve of Pritchard. It is, theoretically, the fastest algorithm for generating prime numbers. It's also very fast on modern hardware, but requires too much memory to be used for very large limits n. I wonder how Prime Bro is doing. Well, that's the end. Thank you to Grant Sanderson and James Schloss for having this competition. Thank you to Paul Pritchard for offering to collaborate and being so thorough and patient with all of my questions. Not to mention the animations as well. Those were stunning. And thank you for watching all the way through. There will be more resources in the description, including a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the algorithm and a better definition of primorials because I oversimplified it in this video. Thanks for watching.